Okay, so essentially the purpose of this video is because I'm planning on playing Max Payne 2 and I really, and it's a sequel, so it's like kind of weird, but like it's bad enough I'm going to play Max Payne 2 with its outdated ass graphics, which is nothing wrong with that, but like, I, I mean there is a lot of things wrong with outdated ass graphics, obviously. But like I, I will play Max Payne 2 because there's a lot of nostalgia and the gameplay is fun. But yeah, I could play Max Payne 1, but I don't want to because it's so fucking old. I mean, I'm pretty sure it came out in like 01 or 02. And like, yeah. Anyways, um, so this is uh, the story time recap. Or what's it called? This is the story time recap for Max Payne One. It's funny, so kind of cheating, not really. Who cares? I'm gonna watch it anyways, and hopefully, it's not too boring. Okay. All right, one take, I'm a busy man. Meet Max Payne, a grizzled detective opting for a quieter mm -hmm. life in the suburbs with his wife, so Michelle, here. and his newborn daughter. But when he arrives home on his last day of work, he finds that his family has been murdered by drug addicts. And that first mission, because I played Max Payne 1 when I was a kid, and like, I think I was like fucking 8 or 9 when I played it. That's how fucking old I am. And like, I thought because it was made by Rockstar, I don't even know if the, what was the first one made by, yeah, probably. I thought, because like from like the, the box art, the case art in the fucking back, I was like, oh cool, it's like a fucking, kind of like GTA, it's like, dude, it's like, it's GTA but I'm a cop. But then I played it, and then the very first mission has the character Max Payne come home to his wife and infant child getting murdered. And then the murderers are still in the house. It's like three crackheads. And then like, you could, and this, it blew me away because you could interact with like every fucking cupboard, every fucking, you know, all that shit. And then essentially like, like you can find a shotgun in the, in a fucking wardrobe. And like, you could play that first entire like level without picking up that shotgun, but it's so worth it. Um, anyways, yeah, it was freaky. And then there's a fucking dead baby underneath a fucking blanket on the ground. And yeah, it was fucking so wild. And I was like, why am I playing this? But I fucking played the game a lot. I didn't finish the first game. I'll explain why later. Surely they'll bring up the section that I stopped at. But yeah. He kills the junkies, but has no idea why they would do this. Why did you do this? His only clue, <laughs> the junkies graffitied a black V with a syringe on it. Max knew this to be the symbol of the designer drug, Valkyr. Why would they do that? Why would they leave like a big clue? <laughs> that seems dumb. Three years pass by, and Max has joined the DEA. He's got a new focus now, to stop the creation and distribution of Valkyr. To do yeah. this, he goes undercover to infiltrate the Punchinello crime family. This the head of which is Don Angelo Punchinello. Like, yeah. And like, that's another thing. Like, I didn't know about drugs as a kid. Like, I knew what the word was, and we weren't allowed to like talk about them around the house. Ironically. And then, um... But yeah, the game was super heavy based around a drug called Valkyr. But me as a child, I was just playing for the shoot bangs and the slow mos. I had no fucking idea there was going to be like heavy drug stuff. Regardless, we'll carry on. I don't know why I brought that up. I bring that up because like thinking back now, a lot of the levels made sense. Like, like it'll, it'll show you later. There's some wild ass levels. I fucking stopped like three times no only not even a minute and i'm just gonna shut the fuck up for a bit but yeah he's undercover and you fucking come across cops and you're helping cops and you come across 
mafia members and he helping mafia. It's just a whole big thing. Pacinello's right hand man, Jack Lapino, has caught the DEA's attention with his That's trafficking psycho. and dealing of Valkyrie. Max joins Lapino's crew, working his way up the ranks to get to Lapino. Lapino. One day. Max receives a call from a man only known as BB. Love you too, BB. <laughs> his handler at the DEA. BB sends him to the Roscoe Street subway to yeah, meet look with at his graphics. colleague, Alex Balder. Okay, there's gonna be a lot of characters here. Now, Alex Balder is a good friend of Max's, and he and BB are the only ones who know that Max is undercover. It's not mm. written down nowhere. But when Max arrives at the subway platform, he finds a dead security guard and two mobsters waiting for the next train. They're gonna be late. Instead of arresting him, yeah, Max kills the monsters and heads into another room where he saves a subway worker. You are welcome, thank you. The worker leads Max <laughs> to an upper level where he can call for help. Meanwhile, Max takes an old subway car down to a oh, disused fuck. section. Another cool thing. They could die. Like essential NPCs could die. So he could die. Like that, that mobster can shoot him before you shoot the mobster. And then you're just stuck. And there's manual saves. There's no auto saves at this point. So like if you didn't. Like you have to play the whole fucking first section of the game again. If you didn't manually save. So that subway worker. Gets his fucking head blown off by a shotgun. And I didn't know what was going on. Because like I said before. I'm a fucking. I was a kid. So I was playing for shoot bangs and slow mos. I don't know. But I got stuck in so many sections. This section, I didn't know to hit the controls on the train to drive it into the fucking barricade. So I was like walking around, and there's no indicators. You just have to walk up to it and hit X or something, and then he, t he taps the button and turns it on. I didn't know that. So I was walking around like, how do I progress the story? And I walked over to the train controls. I'm like, surely I can't drive the train. There's a barrier there. And I turned the train on, because I wasn't paying attention. I was looking for people to shoot. I wasn't thinking about driving trains anyways. It sounds like I'm making excuses for why I just... <laughs> Subway. I don't think you can do that. I don't think you can just turn the key. All right, yeah. Max feels yeah, the Yeah, I don't think so either. Oh, what's happening? And he discovers a large hole in the subway wall, leading right to an old, closed-off entrance to a bank vault. Of yeah. course, the Sneaky. Roscoe Street Bank was right next door. The mobsters are pulling a bank heist. He kills him, and he looks through oh. their loot. <gasps> Acer Bonds. I don't know what that is. Acer is a major pharmaceutical company, and these bonds are very valuable, as they would be. They're in a bank. They're trying to steal them. Makes <laughs> no sense. Shit. Max also finds some detonators, so he goes, oh, button go click, and the door explodes. That you, I mean, okay. <laughs> through the door, he finds the man he's looking for. Alex Boulder, but Boulder barely has a chance to explain himself before he is shot from behind. Damn. He's been killed. There goes his mate. Max well, leaves the scene of the crime the and heads straight to the Lupino's hotel to avenge his friend. At the hotel, Max runs into the Finito brothers. <laughs> there's, there's a limited number of them. <laughs> is that funny? I don't even know. It's 7 30 in the morning. Anyway, the yeah, Finito no, brothers no, are two of Jack Lapino's lackeys. He kills the brothers, and <coughs> on their person, he finds a note. It's written by another character. There's so many characters. Vinny Gognitti. These are remember. stupid names. He was in a sick Jack game. Lupino's right hand man. My god, Spoilers. Jack's at the center of all of this. The letter is to is. the Finito brothers, telling them that a Velkia deal is going down at the hotel, and they need to meet up with Chicago mobster Rico... Oh, I can do this. Rico... Muerte. Muerte. I caramba. Rico Muerte. Max finds Rico Muerte's hotel number, and he makes his way there. As, uh, nice <laughs> he hotel. wrote the script Let's while walking through the hotel, though. Max passes by a radio. And the radio says, Max, you are now wanted for the murder of DEA colleague Alex Balder. <gasps> Not the old He'll have to explain setup. himself later, though. Oh, for now, he's shit. got to kill Rick. Yo, and that was so cool. There's a second door to get into that room. No, I might be thinking. Was there a second door to go into the room? Anyways, I got killed by that stupid trap. And I was so confused when I died to it. I was like, what shot me? And then I loaded back, and then I went back through, and then I saw that, and I was like, oh snap, there's a shotgun trap. And then my dad was in the room at the time, and then even he was like, befuddled. He was like, oh, they set up a shotgun trap in front of the door. And he was like, telling me how it would work, and I was like, how, how does that work? And then he was like, oh, there's a counterweight on the back of the door, and when you swing the door open, it like, 
pulls the string which pulls the trigger that's attached to the shotgun. Wait, pull the, the ropes, the strings attached to the trigger. And then when you open the door, it pulls the string and the string pulls the trigger and then the shotgun goes boom. Yeah, sorry, that was weird. Everyone knows how shotgun traps work. Go Muete in his hotel room. Except the hotel room is empty, but there is a letter, and the letter is from Don Ponchonello. Mm? The letter asks Muete to do me a favor family. by backing up the Valkyr deal. Oh my God, he's in. He's as proof. Maybe Rico's at the bar. So Max kills <laughs> everyone on the way down to the bar. Yeah, he's got spray there he one. finds Rico Muete uh, with Candy Dawn, and he's. Uh, how do I do this in an advertiser-friendly way? You He's don't, brother. dispensing prize tickets from the arcade machine. Yeah. My dad was still in the room when this <laughs> when this cutscene happened. I was like, what is, what's going on there? He didn't tell me what was going on there. But they might show in the next scene, because I keep stopping it. But essentially what happens is, it's like a kind of a boss fight, I guess. And then, like... Friggin, he's, he's, his pants are down, and he's just in his boxes, and his pants are around his ankles. And then you smoke him. And I thought that was so funny. I was like, why is he in his undies? And I didn't know what had just went down. Moving on. Muertes reaches for his gun, but Max is too quick, and also in slow motion. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see? He's got so he leaves the though. building with an enormous body count, and on his way... Yeah, yeah, so it's 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 gun, it's, but Max it's is too quick and also in slow motion. Look, look at that. Look at him. Look at him with his little undies on. Anyways. So he leaves the building with an enormous body count, and on his way past reception, he overhears a phone call. Rico Muerte has called Vinny Gognitti and warned him about Max. Now he's on guard. As Max is leaving the hotel, there's a sudden explosion. <laughs> A bomb has gone off in one of Jack Lupino's tenant buildings. Riding shotgun and speeding away from the scene, Max spots Vladimir Lem, the head of the Russian mob in New York, and sworn enemy of Don Angelo Bunchanello. Max goes and investigates the building explosion. He believes he will find Vinny Gognitti there. Suddenly, a phone rings. So many characters. On the other end, a man introduces himself as Alfred Wode. See how many characters there are in yeah, this fucking game? Stupid. Alfred warns Max. The police are on their way. And we like need, proper need to get out of there. Out. Max won't leave without Vinny Gognitti. I need him. I love him. Max makes his way through the building and uses one of Gognitti's men to access the secured room upstairs. There he finds Gognitti and, and shoots <laughs> Him in the ah, chest. And then too, you fucking go down with them, and then you just like, alright, get them to let me in. Like, alright then, and then you just fucking smoke everyone inside. That's so fucked up because Max is undercover. They know, they know Max. He's like a shooter. He's like, yo, yeah, Max. Max is one of our best hitmen. He's a killer. So they like, some of them will be like trust trusting and be like, oh yeah, I remember you from around the way. And then it's like, yeah, help me get inside this club. And you gotta jump inside the club and you end up fucking like smoking everyone. It's so fucked up, but good because they're criminals, so it's okay. And then this idiot, he he comes back. Gognetti's men try to kill Max, but fail, because Max yeah. is too fast yeah. and too good at shooting. Max chases the oh, injured yeah. Gognetti over the rooftops until he finally reaches hey, a, a dead end. Max Sorry, there you go, Mac. That sound effect you used Max, for the fail, two Mac teams. Max is too fast and that's too so good funny. at I know shooting. Wrong. Mac. They focused on the task in hand. Chases the injured Gognetti over the rooftops until he finally reaches a dead end. Max shoots him again and then interrogates him on Jack Lupino's <laughs> whereabouts. You tell me where he is. I shoots don't even him for know. Holes, interrogates him. tells Max that Lupino is at the Ragnarok, a gothic nightclub. He's in a, he's in a like um. <laughs> <laughs> Max doesn't kill Gognetti. He's not worth it. You ain't worth it me even though oh, i've got a body <laughs> count of around 50 yeah. so far but one more i couldn't possibly have one, one more murder on me hands
Max heads to the Ragnarok where Jack Lupino is hiding out. I want to see the Pino. While there, he learns about Lupino's violent behavior and his fascination with the occult. It looks like he's been murdering people and doing some satanic rituals with him, such as drawing blood in a pentagram and such. Max finds a letter to Lupino and Don Angelo Punchinello. And it's covered in blood. And it warns Lupino, you gotta get your act together. Or you'll get a paid a visit from the trio. The trio are Punchinello's three most notorious hitmen. See how this game has too many people? Max yeah. finally finds Jack Lupino. He has been waiting for this moment. Fuck, Lupino this is, is a uh, big guy. For you. And he's pumped full of Valkyr and Moxie and Spunk. And it looks like his addiction has taken over. Because he's just speaking gibberish. Max takes him down yeah. by superior. Yeah. Fucking. This mission was so fucking hard fighting this dude. Because, like, they just. Yeah, the fucking. These idiots, the henchmen, they just keep pouring in. Like, I did it. I pulled it off eventually. I, f I forget how. Because, like, reminder, I was like. Oh, you know what? I wasn't. No, I was eight when I played one. And I didn't finish it. And then I got it. I got Max Payne 1 again. Like years later. When I was like 11. And I replayed it. And I got to this part. And then like. Throughout this entire boss fight. The boss is like. Screaming satanic shit. The flesh of fallen angels. Come to me all. Astaroth. Beelzebub. Asmodeus. Baphomet. Lucifer. Loki. Satan. Jadula. Lilithella. Blood to you. While he's fighting you, and he's saying some like, you yeah, just saying some that's out of its shit because he's hooked on this drug, and he thinks he like, he's eating angels and stuff. He's like a cannibal, and he like drinks people's blood. And then my mother walked in because she heard because I had the TV up so stupidly loud because of of course I did. And she comes in hearing all these like satanic chants and yell yelling and stuff, and then she's like, "What are you? What are you playing?" And I'm like, oh, I'm playing Max Payne. She's like, what's Max Payne about? And I'm like, oh, you play as a, a cop and you have to go around shooting bad guys. And she was like, why is this person? It's like, oh, I don't know. He's just a crazy person. I have tasted the flesh of fallen angels. I've tasted the devil's green blood. It runs in my veins. I've seen beyond the world of skin. The architecture of blood and bone and arrow. Death is coming. She is coming, and hell follows with her. This is the twilight winter. I am ready to be her son. Her time is now, and all who stand in her way must die. <laughs> <laughs> You'll die! You'll <laughs> die! Now! All die! He like... Yeah, things... It's, yeah, it was a big thing. And she was like... I could tell she was a bit worried. Because it was like kind of dark. But then I think the fact that you play as a cop and you're shooting bad guys, she was okay with it. Because if it was GTA, she would be like, No, can't play GTA. Because that you're a bad guy, but then the Max Payne, Max Payne's okay because you're a cop. Anyways, moving on. When Lupino finally went down, I wanted to make real sure he'd stay that way. V was a bad monster. Turned them into friggin' zombie demons from outer space. But yeah, this boss fight, silly, so dumb in a good way, memorable. I remember this. This was scary and hard for a little eleven-year-old. Carry on. They are shooting, because Max is the best at shooting. After killing Jack Lupino, a woman comes out from behind the curtain. Is it safe? Max says yes. She pulls a gun out on Max, but Max returns the gesture. They are now in a Mexican standoff. She says, my name is Mona Sachs, <laughs> and I have a twin sister, Lisa, and she is married to Don Punchanello. I gotta save her. Mona tells Max, also, by the way, when Alex Balder was shot, that was Punchinello, not Lupino. They both seem to have a common enemy in Punchinello. 
so they lower their guns, and Mona offers him a drink. After Max what skulls the half whiskey, half monster energy concoction, <laughs> called a miski, he immediately <laughs> passes whiskey. out. Oh, uh, while he's unconscious, he has a nightmare. He's back in his old home in the suburbs. This, his this wife is when and I baby stopped playing. I thought I was time, playing a shoot the one game. Pulling the trigger. The dream changes, and Max is remembering something he read in one of Michelle's. Who's Michelle? Oh, his wife. I may not have Michelle been this, but I just remember there was the these dream sequence missions. One day she and was they were a so dossier. spooky. Something and I was like, I didn't sign up to play a horror game. Tell Matt. Too busy. Such I'm push, too busy. Loki. He wakes up from his nightmare to find that he has been tied to a chair. In the room is a man holding a bat. My name Frankie. Frankie the Bat Niagara. Matt takes several oh hits gosh. to the face. No. Before, Jesus, you can take one maybe. Matt yeah. takes several hits to the face what? before Frankie leaves to get a drink. I'm too tired to keep hitting this dude across the face <laughs> of a bat. I need a drink. This it's gives weird. Max just enough time to escape. But on his way out, he overhears a mobster on a payphone. Of course he overhears something. He always overhears the critical information. He overhears a mobster on a payphone talking to Mona Sachs. It seems like right after she drugged Max, she went and tried to assassinate Don Angelo Punchinello herself. Now she's been taken hostage too. Well, that's good. Well, he should leave. Captured. Lay he's low. Killed, he's killed like a hundred like people. How come they tied him up dead. and beat him with a baseball? Because she board? drugged you. Then go and get your vengeance. You know what I mean? In another part of the club, Max overhears a radio broadcast saying that it's his own body that's been found. Wait, what? Someone has staged Max's murder. Now that's a plot twist. Max puts together that Punchinello didn't want the police snooping around while he had Max hostage, so he faked his death. Dumb. So dumb. So dumb. Firstly, why not just shoot Max? He's killed like all of your best dudes at this point, or some of them. Just kill him. I'm glad they didn't, because there wouldn't be Max Payne 2 or 3. But yeah, so silly. Or just smoke him. It's like he's coming back to smoke everyone. And then they faked his death, and now the cops think he's dead. Cops no longer looking for him. Probably, yeah, you just walk around shooting everyone willy-nilly, and they'll just think it's someone else. Anyways, it's not part of the story. It's not, uh, maybe sort of, I don't know, I don't remember. Carry on. Max then finds a note to Frankie the Bat, written by Punchinello, asking him to take care of Max. Well, yeah. that's kind of redundant. We know, we know. Stop, why did you need this note? Max goes to the bar <laughs> and finds Frankie getting his refreshment. <laughs> he, d he kills it's Frankie. You're dead and leaves the club, noticing that he's been tailed by Vladimir. Vladimir pulls up. I got a proposition for you, Max, and it ain't sex. What is it? <laughs> I'm listening. Vladimir's man, Boris Dime, has betrayed him and taken Ooh. over his cargo ship, Carol. The ship is full of guns and ammo, and if Max helps Vladimir to retake it and get his revenge on Dime, then Max can keep as many weapons as he likes in his venture to take on Punchinella. I only need one, to be honest. A handgun. You can have like 50 guns. Yeah, I know, but that doesn't make me more effective. <laughs> All right, 100 <laughs> guns. No, no, <laughs> you don't get it. 150, Late. last offer. Max agrees. <laughs> See, and this is why I kind of wish I'd played it past it. Okay, that, they didn't show enough of the dream sequence. That dream sequence was spooky as fuck. Like, like I, Maybe I was, I was fucking eight when I played that far. Oh, wow. I remember now because I was, yeah, I was eight. My f fucking, be my best friend at the time, he was in there watching me play it. And we got to that spot and we both looked at each other and the sun had just gone down. And like the whole house was empty. Everyone was gone except me and him. And then we'll play. I was like trying to show him this cool shoot band game with slow-mo and stuff. And then I got to that section and me and him were like, this, this is scary. I'm like, all right, let's stop playing. And then like, I don't care. No one's gonna watch this video anyway, so no one can clown me for it. But yeah, that that that, that shit was scary. Moving on. But also, one more thing. This is why I wish I played more. Because if I'd played this mission when I was a kid, I probably would have had the fucking time of my life capturing a cargo ship for the Russian mob. 
like I could just assume because the way Max Payne games are set up, I could just assume you could probably like use every gun in the game on this mission, and that would have been so much fun. Anyways, hope let's see what happens. We know what happens. He captures the ship, gets his guns, blah 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 and they drive to the docks. Max makes his way through the shipyard where he stumbles upon a briefcase of money, a sniper rifle, and the word mayor written on a piece of paper. <laughs> in case you forget who you're trying to assassinate. Imagine not having the piece of paper. I shot the guy in charge of sanitation. That's who you wanted, right? Whatever. <laughs> Instead of calling the police, he goes, it looks like someone has put out a hit on the mayor. Max reaches the bridge of the ship no, with a phone call. It's Punchinello. Punchinello thinks he'll be talking to Boris Dime, but Max answers. Max antagonizes Punchinello <laughs> and then hangs up the phone <laughs> and then continues. Ah, imagine that. Imagine you tell like your best hitter, dude's nickname the Bat. You tell him to smoke this cop that's been doing all this killing, and then like you got this Russian dude on your team. He like betrayed his boss and has a cargo ship full of guns and then you like call up to check on him be like hey you still got my guns and then the dude that's been killing every one of your men answers and you're just like fuck he got the cargo ship too continues downstairs to find Boris Stein. Max kills Dime with his superior shooting powers and he grabs the ammo he needs. Vladimir offers to help him take down Punchinello but Max declines. Why? Max calls punch. <laughs> okay. So I don't know if it's like official knowledge, but I like knowledge. What? I don't know if it's like real, but the like belief is that back in the day, in like the early 2000s and 90s, like a lot of Russian mafia members were a form of like Russian military. They fought in like Afghanistan and uh, Chechnya and whatnot. So like, but then again, Max just cleared a whole cargo ship by himself. Yeah, no, that make that checks out. Never mind. Like like he said before, he didn't really need 150 guns or the Russian maf mafia to help him. He just needed one Beretta, and he probably would have done it all. Like he scored a sniper rifle. That's good at least, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, that's fucking. That's that's so funny. And he's like, okay. Comrade, you help me take ship, we help you take Capture New York if if Max wanted to. Max like, nah. I'll take this one bolt action and I'm sweet. Hello. And they arrange to meet at a nearby restaurant. But when Max arrives at the restaurant, it's empty. Everything is closed because of the COVID. Suddenly <laughs> there's an explosion and the restaurant goes up in flames, trapping Max inside. Obviously this was a trap. Are you no, dumb? Shit. Max makes his way to the back of the restaurant and escapes through the sewers. Vladimir sees the- What do you mean that sorry son of a bitch? They tell you, oh we're gonna trap the most cold-blooded killer in this restaurant and burn it down. But I want you to guard the sewers. It's the only way to get out. It's like, can't we just close the sewer door and like barricade it? It's like, no. We're gonna leave it open. And you're gonna stand down there. And if the off chance that Max Payne comes down into the sewers, you have to shoot him. I just want to went home. Because at that point, you know your boss is going to be dead by the end of the night. So what's stopping you from just fucking turning around and like just walking home? Not like anyone's going to reprimand you. Everyone's going to die anyways. That sounds cowardly, but it's not. They only among anyways. The smoke and figures that Max must be in trouble. We'll Excuse save your <laughs> fuck. I can't do it. Vladimir pulls up right outside where Max is leaving the sewer, and he goes, "Oi, dummy! Um, well, come on, we're going to we're going to punch in Elo's house." Max sneaks out through the back of the manor and finds a door unlocked. Inside, he finds a dead body that's been stabbed with a knife. Are you Jeez. just leaving dead bodies in your own house and the door unlocked? He makes his way through the kitchen and he spots Pilot. Providence, one of Interesting the trio. Name. He kills Providence <laughs> and continues through the map. Next oh, up bugger. is Joe Deadpan Salem. Jeez, trio member just gave number the two. Max kills him as well. And then he heads to the Punchinello bedroom. Dead on the bed is a woman. Max thinks it's Lisa Punchinello, oh. Don Angelo Punchinello's wife. But he can't be sure. Since she and Mona Sachs are identical twins, it could be Mona. No, which it's is not good. Mona. The telephone ring. Ring, 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 ring. It's Alfred Woden. 
<laughs> it's <laughs> funny. With that bitch dies. It's a helicopter. It's just landed on the Punchinello estate roof. You gotta, you gotta run. Max refuses to leave until he kills Punchinello. But you, you gotta get out of there. Max charges on no, he's got until he runs into trio member number three, the baddest of them all, Vince Mugnail. Mugnail. Read the text on screen for that Mugnail. one. Max, of course, kills him because he is the best. Yes, at he is. Fighting, and then he makes his way to Punchinello. However, Punchinello retreats to his office and locks the door begging for help but max breaks it down i'm gonna kick you punchinello but then three men in suits with assault rifles enter they shoot punchinello while max shoots them punchinello oh is dead max is going to leave but then he runs into more suited men what with the rifles. Hell? a woman walks past max holding a syringe of velcare she injects max with a huge dose that's done and he passes out I don't do so good. act three Okay, see, I know I'm there about the cargo ship. I've okay, I've seen some recaps about Max Payne One, so I wasn't entirely like ignorant to the fact that there are like shady like government figures in this game, like the suited dudes with M4s that kill the guy you're trying to get answers from before he can give you answers. But like, if they're government goons or whatever. And they know what Max has been up to. Why not shoot him? Why dose him with a drug that makes people think they're like angel eaters? Makes people think they could eat angels. Why give him that drug? And then I've, I've seen the movie. Valkyrie was made as like a military stimulant to make soldiers fight harder in the Middle East. But obviously... Drugs are bad, so you shouldn't do that. So the drug has made side effects. Why give the super soldier serum to the good guy? Three. Plot twist. It wasn't a fatal dose. It was an almost fatal dose. The suited men and the unknown woman leave to go somewhere called Cold Steel. Meanwhile, Max is having another fever dream. Oh, my dead baby, my dead wife. Why wouldn't I listen to the thing you had to say about the dossier? Mm. Why was I so busy and running out of the room? Max wakes up from his nightmare and is violently ill. <laughs> He's lucky that that dose of Valkyr didn't kill him. After he recovers, he remembers that the woman was delivering exposition about cold steel. I will go to there. It's a factory just outside of New York City. Oh, look at when this he arrives, bullshit. the unknown woman and her suited men are already taking over the building. Max finds a walkie-talkie so he can overhear more shit. And whoever is on the other end calls for Operation Dead Eyes to commence. Sounds bad. And it is. Because it is a self-destruction protocol. <laughs> They're destroying whatever evidence Cold Steel holds. Max goes deeper into the Cold Steel building, to a control room. He watches the men in suits kill a guard for trying to stop the self-destruct protocol. He walks over to the insignia the stamped on the floor of the control room. Agent oh Smith looking motherfuckers. My God. It's an old military insignia. A V. <gasps> that same V he found graffitied on the wall through a remember. I for bad for spoiling. Remember? Max the movie came out years ago. Steel building. The lower levels were an old military bunker. He finds a man in a lab coat locked in a cell. And Max says, I'll free you if you take me through to the decontamination chamber. Max goes through the chamber and finds a computer with top secret project Valhalla written on it. Oh, I'm going to read about it. In 1991, a <laughs> chemical was created Exposition. by the US Army to enhance stamina and the morale of infantry troops. But by 1995, the project provided unsatisfactory results. And the project was terminated. But someone kept the project going without authorization. Who was it? They doubled the test subject doses and released them into an urban setting for observation. And uh. that urban setting was Max's old address. Oh no! We've now come full circle of all the, of all the how. They weren't okay. Okay, uh, take it they were test subjects. They probably weren't like. I wasn't paying full attention. Either. They probably just said that they were like military personnel. But if they were, and I wasn't paying attention, they died pretty easy. They hopped up on Valkyrie. Max just like cleared his way through a fucking steel plant into a, like an ancient bunker. 
And then they send three like hopped up dudes to his house. What? No, this makes pain. Never mind. We, we just watched what he did and been through. Houses in all the suburbs and all the neighborhoods. You had to walk into mine. Yeah. And this file was dated three years ago. The, yeah, we know. We uh, we get it. That's probably what the dossier was about too. I like just stating the obvious. Max <laughs> escapes cold steel before it collapses. Any leads to who was behind the moider of his family are lost Ooh. in the fiery rubble. A few nights later, Max is contacted by BB. The more he thinks about it, the more he suspects that BB is the one who framed him for Alex's murder. Hmm. They meet up in a parking garage. Max takes one look at BB's smug face and he knows that he's guilty. You did it. You did. You framed me, didn't you? Someone tries you to run that? down Max with their car. How does he never pick that these are traps? BB jumps in. Max chases the car through the garage until it takes a more wrong shooting, turn. More shooting. More slow <laughs> BB tries to make a run for it, but Ooh, Max him. kills him with his gun. The yeah, payphone in the up. garage rings. It's Alfred Woden again. Max, you must meet me at the Asgard building. Max goes there, and he is introduced to the Inner Circle. The Inner Circle were involved with Project Valhalla back in the early stages, before the Project Leader went rogue. Woden then tells him about the Project Leader. Her name? Nicole Horn. Bet you thought it was a dude. It's not. The president of Acer Corporation. <gasps> Remember the bonds? She has equal the rights, money, equal power, fights. and a heart half of the city in her pocket. He says that she refused to allow Project Valhalla to fail. Woden tells Max that if you help the inner circle get rid of Horn, then they can clear all charges Dragon against on. him. Snip snap, I'll fix it for you. Then suddenly, out of nowhere, Nicole Horn's oh suited men break in and kill the inner circle. We <laughs> They're called the inner circle. They're like the Illuminati. Where are their suited goons with M4s? I don't get it. I don't get it. They're like a friggin' secret organization. You'd think they would have some goons in tech gear. No, they got Max though, I guess. I they probably all died though. Max escapes into the security office where, while watching a mine, he sees the explosive. supposedly dead Alfred Woden stand up, looking smug. Fake out. Plot twist. Max moves through the building and finds a videotape and a note from Nicole Horn to Alfred Woden. It looks like she was trying to extort him with whatever was on the tape. Yeah, I gotta get to the bottom of this, says Max. Max then finds Alfred Woden's office where he had left blueprints out to the Aether Corporation building and exactly how to get to Nicole Horn's penthouse. He was behind the bank robbery in that. It seems like Woden left the tape and the letter out in the open, hoping that Max would find it and it would lead him to these blueprints. Woden was on Max's side. Oh, really? I'm confused by this, to be honest. <laughs> Max knows what he has to do. Head to the Acer Corporation building. But when he enters, he runs into none other than Mona Sachs. Mm, they pull guns on each other again. As Horn comes out over the loudspeaker, instructing Mona to kill him, Mona smiles and tells Max not to worry. Horn had helped her to kill Punchinello, but that was the end of their dealings. But then, uh-oh, from behind Max, Mona spots the suited men with their guns drawn. Mona pushes Max down out of the way and fires off some bullets. She's hit, and she lays down dead on the floor in a pool of blood. No, Max swings Ooh. around and kills the suited men. Yeah! But when he turns back, <laughs> the zone is gone. Nothing thick. but the pool of blood remains. Max finds his way up to the penthouse to find Horn, who's been waiting for him. She mentions how none of this would have happened if it weren't for your wife, Michelle, and his sticking her nose in the dossier and such. Might have gotten away with it too. Wasn't for these yeah, but she gone. didn't get away. She with turns it. to leave while her men close in on Max. Max kills all these people and then runs out where there's a helicopter flying by the window. Horn is trying to escape. Max follows Horn to the roof where she's pulling the helicopter. I gotta stop you from getting away. And so he shoots a large antenna on the roof. It falls directly on top of the helicopter and pushes it off the building in a fiery blaze. Ah, ah I killed you. Max stands on the edge of the building, looking down at the wreck. He has a satisfied grin on his face as a SWAT team charges him from behind. The final scene shows <laughs> Max being room. put into a police car with a crowd of onlookers. Max spies Alfred Woden and they exchange a knowing look. <laughs> Good end. Good end to the video. So yeah, that's Max Payne 1. Now I can play the game.
trees and beaches Coast, Coast Island peaches, I ice cream and peaches, peaches. Ice cream uh, and peaches. Keep on learning, teaching the teachers Bob Marley the preacher, Malcolm X the speaker